guys, fall is here and it is time to go out and chase some fish that most people won't be chasing. We are here today to talk top fall fishing baits for bass. As always, for all my TikTok peeps, if you're here from TikTok, go down below in the comments, drop your TikTok name, let a brother know that you're here to watch the video. I always love it when you guys come over from the talk. Fall is a time that I believe is extremely, extremely overlooked by most anglers. Spring, everybody's super excited. Winter was long, we're tired of it. We wanna go out and enjoy some fishing. Summertime, fishing is obviously a very popular sport, but when fall comes, there seems to be a little bit of a transition. A lot of people start to put away their fishing rods and they start grabbing their hunting equipment. What a lot of people don't realize is they're actually missing out on one of the best bites of the entire year. Now what happens in fall? Basically, as the water temperatures start to decline, fish's metabolism starts to react and say, uh-oh, it's getting cold, winter is coming, I have to eat. I have to build up a fat reserve to help me get through the winter. So what these fish are doing is they're changing their locations from their summer towards their winter haunts, and you're gonna find them in these feeding areas. These feeding areas can be the backs of creeks, the backs of coves, steep drop-offs, heavy, heavy weed patches that hold a lot of late oxygen in the fall. But one thing holds true in every body of water. These fish are going to group up very, very tightly together, and they are going to put on the feed bag very, very heavily. This is definitely the time of the year where you have the opportunity to catch some of the biggest and heaviest fish. In the fall, very reminiscent of spring, these fish are gonna have big old bulging bellies, except this time they're not full of eggs. They're full of whatever they are eating. And every forage is gonna be a little bit different depending on what body of water you're fishing, going from deep clear lakes to shallow muddy lakes or even fishing rivers. So you wanna have a nice array of different options to catch those big fish and that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. Let's jump right in. So what we're gonna do is kinda of talk a little bit about the baits and their effectiveness, ranging from a slower speed up to a faster speed. Now obviously as the water temps come down and get colder and colder and colder here in fall, the metabolism of those fish is going to be uh, slowed drastically, which means the movement of those fish is gonna slow drastically. So they're gonna go from chasing and eating and moving to being very lethargic and only wanting easy meals. So. First, let's go ahead and talk about what we're gonna use right now while fish are still actively moving and chasing bait. Number one on my list is going to be a chatterbait. Now, a chatterbait is a very, very effective bait when it comes to covering water. So as I said before, these fish are gonna group up in tight groups, and so they're not gonna be spread out like they were in the summertime. You're not gonna catch one on a log, one in this grass patch, one here, one there. You are going to find 90% of the fish in that lake all in tight groups with one another. So in order to help you search and help find those fish, you're going to use this nice jackhammer chatterbait right here. Now, there's a lot of different brands on the market. Personally, the Jackhammer, to me, gives off a little bit of a different sound. I think the shape of this blade here is a big reason for that. Um, and I also just really love the head profile. Uh, it really displaces a lot of water. It really gives it that solid shimmy shake. And obviously, you can see I have a baitfish type tail on here. That baitfish type tail is gonna imitate shad, lake minnows, shiners, things like that. Um, white is a very universal color. It's very good in dirty water and it's also very good in clear water. The beautiful thing about this is you can change white into anything you want. Put a little bit of chartreuse dye on the tail. You can dye some of these orange or chartreuse and it really makes it pop in that muddy water. So the chatterbait is number one. It's a great moving bait for early fall. Bait numero dos. The second bait we're gonna talk about is also another moving bait. Again, amazing for covering water, and it is also a bait fish imitator. Now, when you're talking about this bait, you really wanna make sure you know what colors to choose in what situations, and we'll talk about that right now. The next bait that we're going to talk about is a lipless crankbait, a rattle trap, whatever you would like to refer to it as, but I refer to it as a big fish fall killer. As you can see in my hand, I've got a couple of different colors of different styles of baits here. So this is an Excalibur discontinued bait in color, and these two are Strike King. Now you'll see there's a bit of a difference here. This one is a red orange color. This color is actually very universal and it can be used well in slightly stained all the way up to very muddy water. Now I'm sure you guys can hear, 
These have a one knock rattle in them. That means there's one big rattle that's knocking back and forth in a chamber in there, back and forth in this bait. And the reason that's great in that dingy, you know, water, that dirty water is because fish can hone in on this bait very easily in that kind of condition. Now, when it comes to a more clear water, natural situation, this one, as you can see, is very reminiscent of a bait fish. And I'll give you guys a good look at that one there. That is very reminiscent of a bait fish color, of a shad, of a lake minnow, or something of that nature. Now that's gonna be very effective in clear water situations, uh, especially when it's a cloudy day. Uh, you wanna keep it very natural, very matte colored. You don't want a lot of flash. This color is gonna shine a lot on those cloudy days. Last but certainly not least, you'll see I have this one. Very similar to the last one, but what it's got is a nice little shimmer. If you guys can see that, this is a gold sexy shad or a foxy shad. And basically what this is good for is slightly stained water to clear water. And you wanna use this on a day where that sun is peeking out so you can get that nice bait fish flash off the sides of this lure. When it comes to working lipless crankbaits, they're not all created equal. As I said before, some have noise and some are actually silent. Okay, so the silence sometimes is good because it sneaks right up on them in that clear water. They don't know what's coming and they just react and they turn and they bite the bait. In addition to color and size and things like that when you're selecting your lure, one thing you wanna pay attention to is how you're going to fish that lure in the fall. When we're covering water, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bomb it way out there, we're gonna cast it, and we're just gonna give it a straight, quick retrieve. And that bait is actually gonna retrieve like this. That's what it's gonna do, it's just gonna shimmy and go really quick across the top, top of weed patches, the top of sand flats, um, backs of creeks, things like that. You wanna burn and cover a lot of water. Another great way to fish this is when you're around bait fish that's schooled up, you could be around a drop off, a break, around rocks, you can actually snap and rip this bait as well. So you're gonna let this bait fall down to the bottom, it's gonna fall down, and you're gonna give it a rip, and it's gonna snap up and dart up, and then it's gonna fall back down and then it's gonna snap up and it's gonna fall back down. And what you're doing is you're creating a predatory response from that fish. Most of the time, fish don't have big brains, right? They're not sitting here thinking, huh, I wonder if I should eat that. You're creating a predatory reaction strike. That fish sees this, they immediately think injured bait fish food, boom, they eat it. So that snap can be very, very effective, especially on slow days when fish are not gonna chase long ways to catch bait. So number two in my moving bait arsenal is gonna be a lipless crankbait. So far we've talked about a chatterbait and a lipless crankbait, two very good fall moving baits. Now we're gonna to start to slow down as far as our movement goes. The water temps are coming down, getting a little bit colder. So now let's jump into our next bait. The next bait we're gonna talk about is the jerk bait. Jerk baits are extremely versatile and they're probably more well known in the springtime. A lot of people think of a jerk bait when the water first starts warming up from winter and they're going out to chase spring bass. The reason we're talking about them right now is because they're an in-between speed bait, meaning they have the versatility and the ability to do both very slow presentation as well as very fast, very erratic presentation. So it's a very good bait to have on board because of its versatility. And again, we're trying to imitate those baits fish. So as you can see here, I've got two different jerk baits, obviously very different in size. Now this first one here is a Lucky Craft bait. You can see it's very translucent. This is a very good clear water color. Now it's not very often that you're probably going to be using a jerk bait in dirty water situations, but there are some times where it can work well. That's when you want to transition to your yellows, your oranges, your fire tigers, your much brighter colors when you're in those dingy situations. I've got two very good clear water colors here. Um, and again, you're gonna notice a difference in size. This is actually a 78 size, and this here is a 110 size. So kind of opposite ends of the spectrum, but this one is gonna do better at imitating bigger bait fish, and this one, smaller bait fish. Nine times out of 10, I will go ahead and I'll set this little one down, because in the fall, most of your bait fish that were born in this spring are going to grow and they'll become larger. So your overall forage base in the fall generally becomes a bit bigger than what it was back in spring. Again, this translucent color is very good. Uh, the chartreuse line down the middle is very good at imitating bait fish. And you can do two things with this. You can either rip, 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 and just give little subtle pauses in between, or you can twitch, twitch, and kill it. 
And guys, in the fall, what happens, there's often a bait fish die off, especially in lakes that have a shad population. There's usually a shad die off. Well, what happens when a shad dies? It's kicking and then it starts to die, right? And it kicks and then it starts to die. Well, you can really imitate that by using a jerk bait. It's all about your presentation. Uh, you wanna be able to experiment. Not every jerk bait is the same, not every brand is the same. Typically, you wanna use a fluorocarbon line. Um, they usually balance very well. If you use mono, it might cause your jerk bait to slowly rise. That being said, sometimes the slow rise is the ticket. Most jerk bait aficionados, you're gonna hear them say, I want it to suspend perfectly. I don't want it to move high, low. Suspension is what you want, especially in super cold temps because those fish, those bait fish are very lethargic and they don't move a whole lot. So, coming in at number three is the jerk bait. All right, guys, let's jump into number four. Now we're done with speed. Speed is out the window. It's later in fall. It's right before the guys in the Midwest are putting their boats away. The, the hardcore diehards are still out. Water temps are around that 50 to 42 degree mark and it's getting cold. Now what we wanna do is we wanna get what I call low and slow. Low and slow. Everything in that lake or in that body of water is now very lethargic. Their bodies have matched the temperature of the water. They're not moving around fast any longer. They're not eating quick any longer. They're very slow, they're very lethargic. So we need to match that same energy that's in that body of water. That is where a tube can come in and a tube can be very, very deadly. Now the reason I say a tube is very deadly is because we have the ability to drag this across the bottom ever so slowly and to get those fish to react. What happens in fall, anywhere there's crawdads or crawfish, they tend to go into winter hibernation. Well, in the meantime, on their way there, they are crawling ever so slowly across the bottom. And these tubes are great, great imitators. Now you can see there's obviously a very clear size difference in these two tubes. This one is very good in spring. It imitates small crayfish. And then in the fall, I like to step it up a little bit bigger. Now it's very simple. If you take a bait like this, it has tentacles that are a little bit too long, just give them a snip. Now you've got a nice big profile and you've got your tassels to imitate those crayfish legs. I like to use lighter line and a medium light rod, drag that across the bottom, and all you're doing is waiting for just a subtle thump. It's gonna be very light, and generally all that is is that fish just pinning that tube to the bottom. Very, very effective fall bait. Last, but certainly not least, in my opinion, this one may be the deadliest fall bait of them all, or the two deadliest fall baits of them all. Uh, again, we're talking low and slow. So what I wanna talk to you guys about here are two different baits that are fished pretty similar in this situation, and that is going to be a blade bait and a spoon. Now, blade baits and spoons are certainly not new to the scene. They have been around for years and years and years, as long as fishing has been around. Um, I really like gold, as you can see. Gold puts off a lot of flash in the water, um, but it's not as flashy as let's say a silver. Although bait fish look silver to us, oftentimes they put off gold hues when the sunlight reflects. How do we fish these little guys? For a blade bait, we're gonna be low and slow. So we're gonna cast this out, we're gonna let it sink down to the bottom, we're gonna be on rocks, on a break, on a sand flat, and we're gonna give it just a little tiny hop. And when I say tiny, I mean your rod tip is only moving two to four inches every time you give it a pop. Just a quick two to four inches. And the goal is simply to get this bait to do this. Just that. You just want it to hop and vibrate just a little bit. And you can see there's a lead piece right down here in this bait. And every time you rip it up, it causes that to just do a little vibration. Well, the fish can feel that subtle vibration underwater, especially when it's clear and cold in late fall. And they're gonna go down and they're gonna ever so gently pin it to the bottom. Oftentimes you won't even feel the bite, but you'll go to do your next hop and you'll actually hop it right into the fish's mouth when they go down to bite it. So it's a very fun way to fish and it's a very effective way to fish. Now, a spoon is very similar in that regard. The difference in a spoon is you're doing more of a lift. So you lift it about one to two feet off bottom. And what you're looking for is that flutter because that spoon is gonna flutter down to the bottom and settle. And the same thing's gonna happen. They're gonna go down and they're gonna pin it to the bottom. You're gonna go to lift up again and you're gonna actually lift into the fish. So it's a little weird and it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's like a double clutch hook set. Cause you go to lift and then you're like, oh, there's a fish. So it's kind of a double clutch. So again, 
the blade bait and the spoon are super effective in late fall. This is probably going to be my last go-to bait at the end of the fall when I'm fishing and the water is 38, 39 degrees, 40 degrees, you know, right before that ice up is gonna come. This bad boy is gonna be my staple late in the year. Well guys, we showed you a whole mess, a whole mess of fall lures. A bunch of different lures that all can catch fish during the fall, whether it's smallmouth, largemouth, all of those baits are extremely effective at targeting those fall bass. What I recommend is going out to your local lake during the fall, take a little break from hunting on a warm day, maybe when the hunting's not so great. Go out in the fall, go out and fish some drop-offs that are very sharp, fish some points, fish some rock points, things like that, and use some of these techniques that I gave you guys in this video. I guarantee you, if you go out there and you employ some of these techniques, you are going to catch some big fall bass. Again, fall is such an overlooked time of the year. It's beautiful. The colors of the trees are amazing. The fish are hungry. And guess what, guys? Nine times out of the 10, you have got the lake to yourself, which does not happen during the summertime. So don't be shy. Get out there and chase some fall bass. You never know. You could catch the biggest one of your life. If you guys like this tips video, please go down, hit that like button, drop me a comment and let me know. I would love to do more videos like this to help educate you guys on different ways to catch fish. And I'd love to continue this series into the winter time. Winter and ice fishing are right around the corner. So I'm super stoked to get into that as well. Let me know below if you guys want me to continue with this sort of series.